Hey, what's up guys? So I've been working on a couple of different projects lately and I wanted to show you guys a bit of the process of how I use this little program called Affinity Photo and why you should consider it instead of Photoshop. And I don't want to spend a whole lot of time in this video talking. I want you guys to just see the work that I've been able to do with this program. I'm not saying it's the best program out there, but I've been using it over the last five years and I've had great results. Check it out. That intro video I just rolled, I literally took my photos, I brought them into the, to the program, and I finished what I wanted, the look that I wanted, from contrast, tone, curves, to retouching. And I could either do this on my Mac, or I could do this on my iPad. And I think the iPad has been pretty, pretty useful for that, because you don't have to necessarily be sitting at a desk the whole time. You can be, you know, you could be waiting in line somewhere, you just do a couple more edits on your picture, you could be on a train, you could be traveling. If And during these COVID times, you could just be in a different room, on your couch, in the kitchen, whatever the case might be. So I think it's, to me, just based on the, the fundamentals of just editing a picture from taking out, you know, blemishes or things that may be distracting in the background for which Photoshop used to do before. But of course, you're paying $10 a month and, you know, there's... There are trade-offs to both because Photoshop seems to be updated every couple of weeks or every couple of months. And so people may may feel more um, welcoming to pay that $10 a month, $120 a year for the next however long you're going to be using it. Because, you know, Photoshop is not always going to be king or it's not always going to be the best moving forward. They're gonna be, there are better programs out there now for specific usages. Photoshop might be better overall because it can do so much, but pretty much there are programs out there, guys. Um, anyway, let's check, let's check out some, I'm going to work on a image here. Which image am I going to work on? Let's see. So yeah, so basically in the raw editor, you can play around with the brightness and exposure and also black point, which is the second thing I was, I was sliding right here. Okay. And then you have... You have lens information too, just like it tells you which lens took the picture. You can change distortion and stuff like that. If there's any barrel distortion with your lens or any chromatic abrasions. Then you have sharpness or detail, so to speak. I'm not gonna really mess with any of this stuff because I don't think I need to. The picture looks good already. So I'd rather do this in, inside the um, software itself. You just hit develop. And so, so just to give you guys a quick, just to give you guys a quick understanding of what's going on here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the actual um, image and make it look more rich and, 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 and contrasted. So where you have saturation for color, contrast deals more with light. So you're going to see in a second. So let me zoom in on this real quick. So her eyes um, look decent. The smile is decent. Um, this is a quick shot. I took it right after church. And so that's what you're looking at here. So basically we'll just do this pretty quickly. I'm going to make this black and white and I'm going to play with the red for her skin. It's a little bit because the idea is to make her glow a little bit more than everything else. So you see how everything is kind of washed out. Her hair is a little washed out too. Um, you can quickly do this in affinity. Just go to, well, levels yeah and um 
play with that a little bit. And also the gamma, bring it down a little bit. But now our skin's a little bit darker. And um, just want to show you guys this real quick. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this this particular fit, um, image, but you can now add a add a, a layer. Let me get this out the way. You can add a layer. Say for example, an adjustment layer and call it curves. This can be done in Photoshop too, by the way. And then I can use this layer to paint in where I want her to be dark. So let's see how dark this is. So let's say I want it to be about this dark. And now with this capability, I can go back to my layers now. And I can say, okay, I'm going to fill it with black. So black basically hides the effect. And I can paint in where I want the effect to be with white. So I pick the paintbrush. Choose white. It's already been selected. I make the brush a little bit bigger. Make sure the opacity so that when I do whatever I'm doing, it's not so obvious. The opacity and the flow. I think the flow is, is how, how the brush actually, when it hits that specific area, if it's going to be a heavy coat or if it's going to be kind of soft, heavy in the middle and soft towards the edges. That's basically how I've been dealing with this. If I, if I run this brush over her face, you can see already what it's going to look like when I do my first stroke. So I can make it a little bit, a little bit um, lower than that, bring the hardness down to, and the size can be a little bit smaller. So let me go back here real quick. I'm using the, um, I'm using the bracket tool to make my brush bigger and smaller. Okay, so you may not be able to see that from so far, but let me get closer. So I can do it to her eyebrows. I can do it to different parts of her. Let me do it back here. And you can do the same thing for light. So you're already seeing the power of affinity. I don't have to start to kind of like explain it to you guys. You guys can see it for firsthand. I can bring up the opacity maybe to 69 around there. Do it to this side of the picture too. Doing all this one-handed here. So and then this file can be saved and I can continue working on this on my on the iPad. So guys, I hope this video was helpful. Hope you got to see how useful this program can be from, you know, it, it's not just a photo editor. It's also, you can do text, you can do designs. If you go to their website, you'll see it for yourself. But you know, sometimes things seem to be hyped up and you don't know what you can actually do with it in the real world. But this program is pretty useful. Pretty much how, what you would do in Photoshop, you can pretty much do with this program. So Affinity Photo, $50 on the app, on the Mac store, $10 on the app store. And it's not, a yearly subscription or a monthly subscription. You pay for it, it's yours, use as much as you want. There are updates throughout the year. And I think whenever they make a significant upgrade, there is an upgrade fee that you would have to pay for it. But the small updates are free. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, guys, peace.